you know, getting her over with the fans currently. Well, you know, for both of those guys, I'm, I'm going to say it's got to be down to booking. I mean, okay, yeah, so Finn came up and, you know, he was going to be the Universal Champion. Injury, you know, not really his fault that he was injured. So that was really unfortunate. Uh, so he should really be at a higher place than he is now. He should be selling merch like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the fact that he didn't get that planned push has really hurt him. And yeah. then they're putting him in there with Bray Wyatt and that just stops your whole momentum. But if we're talking about Bailey. Then the one thing that she had on NXT that she don't have now is she always had a struggle in her story. Um, but they brought her up to like Raw and everything, and it was like instantly she's like a top player. She's in the title picture. You know, you, you're gonna get this from me. You're gonna get that. And and there was no one there to really sort of cause a struggle. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone likes a good person who's good at heart and everything, but you've got to see someone being really nasty and really manipulative and mean to them. <laughs> Just like we saw with Sasha mm-hmm. when she, um, when we saw her down in Brooklyn and yeah. they had that match. And the way that they wrestled and even the way that Sasha wrestled against her, like stamping on her hand and stuff to stop her from getting dressed, trapping it instead, all those little things was very nasty and we didn't see much of that against her anymore uh we just saw people treating her almost like she deserved to be at the top um but if they had people where she putting her down holding her back a bit more i would like to see like at least a year before she even got near the top set yeah I, I i agree and you know the booking has been bad on bailey's part i feel like she's you know she's been beat like nobody's business here um, and, you know, to be fair, it's not just her. You know, even Charlotte now looks somewhat average. Um, I've got to admit, you know, where, where she was at such a great place um, in her career. I, you know, at the start of the year, I thought the women's division was excellent. I thought, like, you know, the Sasha Banks-Charlotte rivalry, I, I enjoyed that from pay-per-view to pay-per-view. Or, you know, the whole Charlotte thing couldn't get beat on a pay-per-view. I, I didn't mind that. I, I thought it was fine. I didn't mind the belt was going around because... It was a good story, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, uh, I know I don't want to go over old stuff here because we've already spoke about this many a times. But once it got to WrestleMania, there was nothing to be had. Um, they'd already taken all the best bits out of it. We already saw Bailey win the belt, and we already saw Charlotte lose the pay per view. So what? A, what a complete waste of time, um, Matt. There is a, a bit of a rumor been going around, and of course, it does mix in with our MMA kind of theme tonight, but. Um, Ronda Rousey, Matt. Um, lots of speculation. She's been training with Brian Kendrick, and uh, WWE and, and Ronda are very interested in doing business with one another. Talk about Survivor Series and then a run up to WrestleMania. What, what's your views on that, Matt? And um, along with that, Matt, will it make? Will it be the big impact that, that it needs to be? Well, I'm all for that. I mean, <clears throat> that's what this show's been about, that crossovers and just how much hype they can generate. Um, I mean, I know, you know, Rondell wasn't successful, you know, last, you know, sort of run in the UFC, but uh, she, there's no doubt she is the first woman to come out there and just prove just how dominant you can be as a, a female sports person sure. in, in the uh, UFC and just what kind of... Like progression she made forward for all women you know, in all sports mm-hmm. uh, and even to some point WWE have to accept that the fans have followed suit on, on the back of some of that as well uh, and the fact that she would come there from the UFC uh, where the buy-in is you know, <laughs> if you want to do the legitimate way yeah, that is where she comes from uh, the fact that people who are supposedly not doing it like for real mm-hmm. so they have quote marks there um that uh, it would be a threat to them and that would automatically generate a lot of buzz because people want to see this woman go out there and beat up these uh, these Barbie toll uh, <laughs> old type people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, it'll be, <laughs> you're absolutely right, but it'll be interesting to see how, and like, is, do you think it's, I know that she's trained to be a wrestler, but my thing is, Matt, why is... I don't want Ronda to come in and just be another wrestler. I want Ronda to be like a, like a half... Kind of like, well, like Brock Lesnar is with the guys. I want her to be kind of legit. I, I would rather stick to what she was doing in UFC and doing the arm bars and taking people down. Now, I'm not saying you don't need to learn you know, wrestling. Of course you do. But I, I hope, in, in many ways, Matt, that they don't go, well, 
Ronda in, but she's going to become a uh, you know a full time looking typical wrestler, and she's going to be doing the moon salts and all this type of stuff. Because I think that would take out some of the the goodness in all that, and I think less is more with the likes of Brock Lesnar and Ronda. Like Ronda, you, you want that kind of you want that sort of uh, mystery about them. You know what will they do? You know I think less is more. I think you got to look at the Goldberg and Lesnar type matches. For that, um, of course, it was a hell of a lot less was more with him too. But okay, not maybe to that extreme. But but certainly, I don't want to see Ronda coming in as a, as kind of a groomed wrestler that's just going to go out and just another another female star. I mean, I know she won't be, but I, her style, Matt, I, I really do believe they need to keep it as as legit as possible for it to work and get over. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, for me, that's the only way I can see them booking that. She has to be that kind of Brock Lesnar sort of mould. Um, she's a legit fight. You know, she's scary if anyone yeah. to get in the ring yeah. with. Uh, even a man you know, yeah. would be afraid to get in the ring with her. So the thing is, you know, it's, they have to generate a reason for someone to fight her. So for mm. me, she would have to hold one of the women's titles. Sure. And... The only reason that anyone would want to step in that ring is to try and take that tile off of her. So, yeah, definitely book her in that strong Brock Lesnar style and make her an attraction, you know. Don't have her at every pay-per-view. I'd be happy just to see her four times a year. Even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think I think a Brock-like deal is, is where they've got to go with her, for sure. I don't want to see her on Raw every night. That's, that's for, for damn sure. Um, okay, um, now moving on, folks. Uh, I suppose it's worth pointing out, and m- m- should be plug in our other podcast myself and Matt uh, we are busy as we've said although we're not doing as many wrestling podcasts we've got into another kind of podcasting now uh, if you're into movies especially old kind of 80s uh, action kind of movies Arnie type films I'm talking about the likes of your Robocop Running Man Total Recall uh, you know all, all the all the crazy films the Terminators those type of films we are doing a retrospective podcast as we speak, um, and it is titled All In. You can look us up um, on Spreaker, on iTunes, and you can get that. You can hit the subscribe button, and we're there. You can listen to that. We've got two up already, and we're going to be doing the Total Recall next. So I encourage anybody that's into films and movies, go along, check that out. Um, I think you'll uh, I think you'll enjoy it. If you like listening to us here, um, it's literally that, but in films. And, uh, as well so uh, yeah definitely check that one out uh, Matt just before we get to the end of this um, I think there's a, there's another crossover that, that happened maybe was it two three weeks ago um, what did you make after the John Jones coming out and saying Brock Lesnar you know I want you to uh, I think you said something like you know see how it feels to get knocked out by a guy that weighs less than you um, what did you make of all that Matt because I thought Brock after Mark Hunt after the whole drug bad substance thing they found I thought that that's going to be it for Brock now he's he's got a very nice payday but it seems that I think that UFC almost and John Jones need Brock Lesnar here to make a bit of a super fight um, is that what you read into this Matt is it more about let's just get two big names because we know Brock is guaranteed money we know that the wrestling fans are going to come in on this and of course John Jones is John Jones you know, no doubt he's a huge name but but that is a super fight type of attraction, isn't it, to, to have Brock there and, of course, go up in weight to, to fight someone like Brock. What did you make of all that, Matt? Yeah, well, you know, as a wrestling fan, it kind of worry me because it kind of makes me wonder, you know, will he have to choose a strict discipline and move away from the wrestling side of things and mm. concentrate more on his mixed martial arts career? Uh, but, you know... if it, just real mixed emotions because like I would love to see John Jones versus Brock Lesnar if, if that happened I would I'd also love it if he could continue wrestling but then you kind of uh, you're not giving yourself the full Brock Lesnar experience because if he came into the UFC training 100% just for that you know he's a completely different kind of beast pardon the pun or that one yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah I, I mean I want to see it I mean yeah I, I do want to see John Jones I mean there'll be no like probably <laughs> um, X Factor about who's on the juice on that yeah. one <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, I mean it'll be it, it's an interesting matchup the, the, the interesting thing is though is that you know you think about John Jones it's it's so out there isn't it for him to call out Brock Lesnar like why 
<laughs> Why would he do that? But so that's what makes me think, Matt, that this can only be something for the attraction of that big guaranteed super flight by having those two names because you know Brock Lesnar you know he he is mainstream in WWE and he you know he makes some good money there's no doubt about it but do you think Brock uh Brock's obviously he's had words on Twitter he's kind of gone back you know be be careful young man and all the rest of it It, is there is is this something that you feel is going to happen in terms Matt of Will WWE again allow Brock Lesnar to do this kind of fight? And also, in timing sense, um, would WWE allow uh, their champion to go over and do this and be the current champion, knowing that there's a possibility that he could get his ass handed to him, and they, you know, he'd have to come back looking very, very weak, shall we say? When, when you know, the way Brock is booked, is there a sort of an issue there because I know with Mark Hunt it was a bit of a gamble and it paid off obviously but he was only going in to face Randy Orton at that one and I know that kind of came off okay but as the champion Matt is there a is there a bit of more of a, a responsibility there for WWE not to have that be the case and maybe they, they strip him of the title or, or do something just before then yeah well I do get the feeling the, uh, the fight is taking shape with mm-hmm. the words that are being exchanged mm-hmm. you know it's, it's just slowly gathering some momentum uh, of course you know these things can happen at any place at the time but they? so yeah. there's a lot of time in that transition that Brock could you know drop the title yeah. at any point and then yeah. all of a sudden there's another guy who's got the rub from him and he looks great because yeah. you know he's beaten the unbeatable mm. but um, <clears throat> yeah if Brock goes into the UFC just it's always you know, like good publicity no yeah. matter whatever you're doing, if he's going into UFC and then he comes back to WWE and then some some UFC fans follow him from the UFC to WWE, that's good business. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's not like people have to choose one or the other. Even if wrestling fans follow Brock to the UFC, you know, I do that and I still watch wrestling like, yeah. week in week out. It doesn't make much difference, but it's always good to see a crossover like that. It's very healthy for the business, I I imagine. Yes, um, well obviously Brock's contract expires um, just after WrestleMania next year, so that's definitely to, to be looked into, you know, is he going to wait for it to expire? Then again, Matt, you know how good Brock is at negotiating a contract, don't you? Um, you, you never know, this could be all publicity to get a nice big bumper deal out of this, couldn't it? Because he'd done this a couple of years ago when it was coming up to WrestleMania, and he ended up signing that and still done uh, the one-off UFC fight. So, you know, who knows here? But um, the one thing I would say, Matt, that I feel that WWE didn't cash in, and I know that they, it's probably because it was very last minute when Brock was added to that card, but if WWE agreed to this, Matt, and they work a deal with UFC like they did last time when their video game was advertised on, on the UFC fight show and all the rest of it, I would like to see WWE work a deal out with Dana and John Jones to have John Jones show up on Raw or something to get some extra publicity, because I really do feel they missed out on that, um, where they could just have this guy show up. I mean, you look at Conor McGregor and and Mayweather, they're they're not even fighting, but it's making so much drama, and you know that if John Jones turns up on a WWE ring, that's going to get all sorts of mainstream publicity that you're not normally going to get. And, you know, I definitely would be pushing towards that if I was WWE this time round. I hope that they don't, let that slip through their fingers if he's if he's still going to be under contract. That would be my only thing. What would your take be on that, Matt? And because uh, there is the other side of, I guess, you know, do you want to promote a guy that is going to literally end up kicking your guy's ass at the end of it? Um, you've got to be a bit careful, I suppose. <laughs> there is a bit of worry about that. Um, I mean, I know when they had Mayweather make a few appearances with WWE, they knew that was going to be in a controlled environment that yeah. they could shape. Um, going to the UFC though, yeah, it's completely different. I guess you know anything can happen. That octagon and mm-hmm. that there's no could be made to look complete for. We, he could lose in like five seconds. You know anything can happen. I mean, what stranger things have happened? Yeah. Well, uh, that's going to sum us up uh, for this part of the show, anyway. But stay tuned because uh, we've got more coming up. Um, after the break but for now it's time to say goodbye to Matt uh, for this this side of the podcast Matt thank you as always for coming on this we're going to be back next week folks we're going to do a review of this fight no doubt about it because myself and Matt will be there anyway so we're going to do a review on it we'll probably talk a little bit more wrestling as well so if you've got questions just for these two weeks only folks bring it in but I want to say while Matt's here as well I've got a little bit of an announcement here about the podcast 
Um, because myself and Matt had a little bit of a chat about things and, and where it was going. Of course, we've had some great.